Hey, out there again. How's everybody doing? Isolation getting to you? Cool. Well, as I mentioned the other day when I did my traveler base, I uh, said of me doing occasional uh, videos, I'll show off my bases uh, because it's fun. Proud of my dwindling collection here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I thought maybe as chance, you know, I have some bases that a lot of other people have and maybe uh, some other people could be interested and in, see what these things are like. So, um, check out the other one uh, if you get a chance on the uh, the Traveler base that I did uh, Wednesday, I think. Uh, and uh, today, we're going to go with another one of my more diminutive bases. Uh, this here is the Guild Junior Jumbo uh, base. It's a uh, very interesting. Uh, it's uh, what's something that's been catching on a lot more in popularity. Uh, something called the guitar scale, acoustic bass guitar. Um, this here is a twenty-three and three-quarter inch uh, scale, so it's uh, much shorter uh, by over ten inches than a standard bass, um, and then about seven, almost seven inches shorter than what a lot of people call a short scale bass. So it's pretty short scale. Uh, you know, there's been a lot going on in this area in the last 10 years or so. Uh, Kala makes the U-Bass based on uh, their ukulele, which is very interesting. And uh, um, Microtone, uh, Gold Tone, Gold Tone, uh, is a, makes something called the Micro Bass, um, which uh, is about 23 and 25 inch scale length as well there. The difference with those instruments is that they have a, uh, a funky silicon type string, which takes a little getting used to. It's very similar to the old uh, Ashburys, uh, if you're familiar with those. I know some people out there on this board uh, have Ashburys. I've mentioned them before, uh, and it's it's different. It feels different, and it's uh, and and it's odd. Um, this here is much more closer to a true gu acoustic guitar. Um, hey, there we go. It's like playing a string kayak. Yeah, that's the thing. The other thing that's interesting. See what. One of the challenges I have, I play uh, with the uh, uh, Dan Morgan band occasionally, and it's a uh, well, acoustic bass. He plays Mar old Martins of different uh, vintages, and uh, I had uh, been struggling to get a bass that fits in well. I'd gone through a few different uh, full-size, more traditional acoustic bass guitars. I had a couple of Michael Kellys. I had a Dean five-string uh, as well. Uh, and the problems with those is, I mean, their their bodies are so huge because they're built more to be along the lines of a traditional guitar and be like a bass, and they're really hard to get consistent sound and tone out of them. I've found uh, uh, feedback, of course, is the biggest issue on those. The bodies are so big and so resonant that it's really hard uh, to not to not get feedback, and and you know that's really tough, and that's and. Uh, uh, I had a Michael Kelly club bass, which I always got, uh, it always sounded fine at home, but whenever I got out and played, I mean, the last time I played it out, the tone was just garbage. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. And it just really, really uh, just bummed me out uh, on that end there. And then I ended up going with the, uh, uh, the Jack Cassidy bass, which we'll show again later, which, uh, because Jack had a similar issue where he was playing uh, both electric and acoustic style music, and he wanted a bass that could split the difference between that, so I used that. But uh, I came across uh, this bass uh, last year, I became aware of it. Uh, I'm trying to get totally in the picture here. Which way? <laughs> Anyways, uh, and uh, uh, the first one that came out that was uh, like this was made by Taylor. I think they called the GS bass. Very, very similar in features and the like, um, but uh, about two hundred dollars more in price. I think this is four ninety nine, and the Taylor is six ninety nine or something like that. Um, and uh, it's uh, great. It comes with its. This here is the gig bag that it comes with. Nice little gig bag. Uh, but for five hundred bucks, though, you really get a whole lot of instrument. So first, we'll go over the. Uh, what you get with the instrument first, and then we'll, I'll show you how it sounds acoustically, and then we'll plug it in. So hope you enjoy this. So first off, obviously, it is a Guild. Guild has a very long history of making high quality, uh, actually not very long, only since the 1950s. They were a latecomer, but they quickly made, or came to be known for making really high quality acoustic instruments. And uh, in the 70s, they actually had made a bass. I think it was the A340. Uh, I have to look up the right name. And this is kind of a scaled down version of their original uh, acoustic bass guitar that they came out with in the 70s. Uh, it, the, uh, it is designed in California, according to the secret, of course, made in China, like everything. 
Uh, we have a Sitka spruce top, pretty standard in acoustic guitars. And then the back, sides, and neck are all maple. And you can take a look here. Uh, there's some pretty nice flaming on that. And you, I think you can also see even the way the light hits, it is uh, sculptured and uh, bowed out there. So it helps with some sound projection. Um, and I don't know if you can see that or not there, but it has very nice guild branded tuning machines. Very nice, very nice. Uh, the, uh, the fretboard and bridge are both ebony. The saddle and nut are both bone. So, I mean, ebony and bone and all maple and uh, a spruce top for $500 base. Right there, you're getting some pretty good deals uh, in that sense there. Uh, again, now, acoustic bass guitar really is a bit different than electric bass. Uh, a lot of people get an acoustic bass guitar and try to play it along uh, the same way. but Which you can, but you really should... Uh, uh, vary your uh, technique a bit, well, which actually we'll get back to in a second. I won't finish uh, one item I forgot. Uh, it does have a um, amplification, obviously. It has a uh, Fishman uh, BT1, I think is what they call it. Yeah, uh, it's very simple. It has bass, uh, it, uh, just has volume and tone controls, and those are located inside the sound hole. You probably can't see, but uh, right here, there's the, uh, the controls. Battery box is right here with the, uh, with the output jack. Uh, and uh, so I think the Taylor and some of the other ones has a much more sophisticated preamp system with a full EQ and whatnot and tuner built in. But uh, that yeah, I'm always torn on those because they kind of compromise the uh, the instrument a little bit more because it's an extra hole that's been drilled into the side and filled up with electronics. So I, I like the simplicity. And you'll see in a minute that uh, it it's very effective and powerful. Anyways. So, uh, and the only other thing that I have uh, here is uh, right here. This is a, a D'Addario uh, sound hole uh, tuner. Um, there's another one here somewhere. Yep. Oh, I do. I don't know where it went. Um, but uh, this is something that clips in. It's turned off here, which is really nice. You can just look straight down and see. And unobtrusive. Great tuner. If you have an acoustic guitar or anything like that, you really want to use it. So. And you can tell the uh, like a lot of acoustic bass guitars, the unplugged sound is not the loudest. Um, the small size of the body kind of contributes to that. Uh, I did have uh, the big brother to this bass for a while, a B240EF, and that had a much more pronounced acoustic uh, uh, sound and was much louder. That bass did get sold. Uh, my dad posted here, but whatever. Uh, but uh, obviously, you know, anyone who plays up, uh, upright knows that you need to get a big acoustic sound, you need body mass. Now, the di biggest difference between the Guild and the Taylor uh, and the other mini basses is the strings. Uh, these are special strings made by D'Addario. They developed them with Taylor, and, uh, but uh, they were able, they're not exclusive to Taylor, but they're the same strings that Taylor used. They are a nylon core, bronze phosphor round string which is just very, very uh, pliable. It doesn't feel too different. It doesn't feel strange. Uh, it is there a narrow gauge, of course. Uh, uh, 37, um, 37 is the G and a 90 is the E, is the e string, um, but they're very pliable. And make you feel very at home. Now, the biggest issue that I've had with adapting to this is the, um, the size of the body. Sitting down is not that big a deal. Standing up, it's a little bit harder. I have freakishly long arms, as you can tell. Woo, where'd it go? Way over there. Uh, and uh, so I'm the type of guy that can play a Thunderbird in first position without any problems. And people talk about the long reach. I don't know what. Here I have the opposite issue because my left arm is... Uh, in more, and if I'm not careful, I can get some little uh, discomfort in my elbow because of that, so I have to keep, be aware of that. But, uh, I don't know if you can hear it all, but this is the neat thing about this here is this works really well with acoustic type jamming because of the nature of the strings, it's a lot easier. You can actually do some chord shapes on here. Uh, 
um, and the like not. So it's a little of, you can, you can approach it in a different way and really I think opens up how you play and approach the instrument, which is nice. It's really cool to be jamming. Um, I have a battery powered uh, um, Roland, Roland, <laughs> Roland uh, bass amp microcube uh, that uh, works very well. So it's uh, that's tiny and all this and um, it, it, it boosts the volume up enough if you're in a, in a jamming type situation. Of course, if you're quite enough volume. It works pretty well too. Um, responds pretty well to a pick. This is a nice little guild effect that came with it, but of course, finger style. Now, the secret sauce that comes in here though is the amplification. Um, as I said, I do play in some uh, acoustic trios and whatnot, and uh, the I've had the the issues with um, the acoustic bass guitars. They tend to be very uh, they're very unwieldy and they are hard to get a consistent sound out of. The feedback and all. Some people can do it. If you ever seen Trampled by Turtles, the guy plays a Martin bass guitar through an SVT. Uh, God knows he's got techs and whatnot making it happen. Uh, I would love to be able to do that. I've not. It's one of the the only. Uh, ABG that I haven't touched yet is the Martin one. I'd love to check one of those out and maybe get one of those for uh, my arsenal, especially if I'm playing with Dan, if they can make that work. Be all Martins up there on stage. That would be a good deal. But uh, like I said, Guild is a good enough name in that sense here. No, this is where it blows everyone's mind. So as I said, it has a very simple tone and volume. The tone is closest up to the neck and here's the volume. I have this plugged into my uh, trusty ELF setup, which is uh, 210 uh, uh, ELF cabinets with the ELF head. I got the EQs are all set straight up. Uh, the gain is straight up, uh, which is tricky on the on the ELF, because the gain actually does has a lot to do with how the the, the amp sounds. Um, and uh, the volume is up at three o'clock, so it's up really loud. Um, but uh, Let's slowly here roll in on the volume. And one of the neat things about this here, it's easier to control the feedback because the body is smaller. But uh, so I have the volume up. You can probably hear the, my voice making the strings vibrate. But here you go. Yeah, that's tone up all the way. And that's uh, the volume just, uh, just cracked. Just barely anything. I turn it up all the way. It will howl because I'm in a small boxed in room here and uh, oh boy, not a lot. Okay, so you can tell they're a little quacky on the attack. Uh, which is pretty common for a lot of piezos there, but that's what the tone is all the way up. Let's roll that tone back a little bit. Definitely darkening of the tone. The tone, unlike on my uh, Traveler, the, uh, there's much more uh, effect as the tone rolls across the, uh, the spectrum. There. You can get it the feedback if you want to, but it's much easier to control uh, than the uh, than the larger body ones. Ow! A little clunky. Now the action on this is a little bit high. The neck is very straight. Uh, it gets the action, as you can see, gets a little high up toward the top here. Um, if we ever get out of here, maybe I'll have my guy uh, shave down the the, uh, the saddle a little bit to get the action a little bit lower. And of course, the problem with that is you get you run into a little little funkiness in the. Um, that's not too bad there. In some of the intonation. As you go up the neck, but that's to be expected. Be expected and some of that, and come on, all the money's down here below the fifth fret, right, guys? No. So there, 
can see that there. Um, I do have a, a little LR bags uh, uh, preamp that I can use to try to um, add a little different t definition to it all. But really, I mean, would uh, I've played this through a, a Bose uh, S1 compact system, um, just using the tone controls on this, and it's holy cow, it's huge and deep. <laughs> This is helpful or not. Again, like I said, I would uh, I'll do this occasionally for some of the other bases. Here's with the uh, tone. Here's the tone rolled all the way off. You can hear much darker sounds, obviously. Oh, here's some other resonance going on in the room here because it's not acoustically dampened. <laughs> I got uh, lots of other stringed instruments and whatnot, and so things, strange things start happening, and I have weird things. Uh... There's a weird node there around E. As you can tell, I'm playing the E's. I get some weird vibrations in the room. So that's uh, what's going on there. adjustment because it is such uh, a small scale the neck is very thin I think it's an uh, inch and five eighths actually it's not that thin um, it's maybe jazz bass style so there's that familiarity but the uh, the frets obviously are a lot closer together so you have to adjust for that and again as I mentioned some of the, the issues make sure you you want to hold the bass properly um, because you will run into uh, some issues with uh, the position of your arm so probably works better for uh, the play. Anyways, that is the Guild Jum Jumbo Junior Bass, <laughs> whatever they call it there. Um, have any other questions feel free to ping and ask I, again like i said hopefully this uh give you exposure to some instruments you may not have seen like i don't have a completely eclectic uh collection but i do have some bases that are not standard and not common to what other people may have and um just want to share that information um so go check it out if you get a chance uh, if you're in the market for uh acoustic bass guitar this really can bring bring it. It sounds just like a bass. Uh, it's uh, people don't really care about the fact that it doesn't as big as a bass. I think uh, when, especially once they hear it, uh, it fits in really well. Actually, with a um, if you're jamming with some other acoustic players, it uh, doesn't seem as out of place because it's so much closer in size to a uh, to a standard uh, acoustic guitar. So it looks like it fits in. But obviously, it's still smaller than like a Martin D28, um, which is uh, odd uh, in that sense. But uh, I really love this bass. Uh, this is, like I said, it really has uh, solved a lot of issues. Uh, again, very little feedback. I've played this in some really crappy um, situations where I'm going live through the PA. Um, and um, have it fold back in front of me and still doesn't feed back that much. Uh, situations where a more larger, traditional sized AVG uh, would just howl in agony, uh, as the crowd would howl in agony as well <laughs> from the uh, horrendous feedback. But again, uh, thanks for sticking around. I've gone 20 minutes on this, probably lost a few people's interests. 
hopefully uh, if some other people can watch it and get an idea on it. But uh, yeah, again, any questions, feel free to hit me up, ask anything, either here or send me a DM. I'm more than happy to answer. Um, again, if you're looking for a really solid uh, gigable instrument, that uh, would really fit in. You could do a lot of acoustic things uh, and whatnot. This, I think, is a absolute, again, compared to the competition, it's for the, the quality of the build and the materials, it's a huge bargain, an incredibly versatile uh, instrument. So, uh, rock on.